In today's video, we're gonna show you how to install and set up a disc brake on your mountain bike. That includes trimming the hose down, fitting the olive and the barb, and if needed, doing a bit of a bleed on there as well. Uh, this is how you do it. In today's video, I'm gonna install a four piston Shimano SLX brake to the front of this bike. Now the process really is the same no matter what the brand and whether it's a front or rear brake. The only real difference is the cable routing, etc., on the bike. Now there's two major types of cable routing on any mountain bike, there's external and internal. External kind of speaks for itself. You will have dedicated clips or cable guides, maybe using zip ties, something like that to hold the cables in place. Well, there's internal routing. Now with internal, there falls two major styles. Newer styles tend to have channels on the inside of the frame. You'd literally feed the hose in and it comes out magically at the other end. But there are still some out there that don't have that. So you literally have a hole like an entrance port and an exit port. And getting the hose to go in and out to the other end in, in the right place can be a bit of a headache. Now, if your bike is like this, I strongly recommend you get hold of one of these internal cable route kits, whether you borrow one or you buy one uh, if you can warrant it. It is such a good bit of kit and really it's so simple, which is probably the key to it working so well. Now essentially all it is, is various different size inner cables with different fittings on the end. And you pass these cables through with a really powerful magnet from the outside of the frame, feed them through the frame, and then you attach them to the brake hose and you pull the hose back through using this. It's so simple and it's a really effective system. So if you're doing that, I do recommend trying to get hold of one of these. Otherwise you might be swearing a bit. Okay, tools for the job. You're obviously gonna need the relevant brake. Now be very careful when you open your brake, You'll find on the inside, there'll be a little clear packet. You'll need the contents of this. So there's a disc brake pad spacer. You're gonna to need to install that between the pads. You look very carefully, you'll find there's a little barb in there, a little barbed hose insert. That is to go on the inside of the hose once you've trimmed it down. There's an olive and a little rubber sheath as well. So you have to have those in order to trim the hose down. You'll also find there's one of these little hose clamps on there. So that can help you with the process of trimming that hose down. Although to be fair, there is a much better and easier way of doing it. Now, whilst you can clamp the hose in a vise with this and trim it with a knife and get a pretty good effect, what you're aiming to do is trim the hose completely 90 degrees flush in order for the barb to have a completely water and airtight seal and really you won't beat the dedicated tool for the job. There's loads of different options on the market, Shimano make their own one, SRAM make one, and of course Park make one. So you can both trim the hose here, and you also have a little clamp at the end dedicated to put the insert straight in with a little mini clamp that holds the hose. Now if you work on brakes quite a lot, it is worthwhile getting one of these tools. Uh, if not, like I said, you can get by using the supplied stuff, but just take care because cutting that hose, it has to be a really good cut at 90 degrees. Otherwise, you can't guarantee really good performance from your brakes. Uh, you're obviously gonna need some Allen keys depending on the setup of your bike. Uh, for a Shimano brake, you need a four millimeter to put the clamp on the bars. You need a two and a half millimeter on these Fox forks in order to have the, uh, the hose clamp there. Uh, you need a five millimeter to put the actual caliper on. And you're gonna need an eight millimeter spanner at the lever end there. Finally, the last thing you're gonna need, for this job at least, is some Shimano mineral fluid and the bleed kit. Uh, you'll obviously need the relevant kit depending on what brakes you have. Uh, if you've got SRAM brakes, you'll need dot fluid and of course the SRAM bleed kit. If you're using Magura brakes, you'll need the Royal Blood, which is blue, and their relevant kit, etc., etc. Now, before you get started, you just need to make sure you have all of the correct parts and the brakes, of course, are gonna fit and be compatible with your bike and your wheels. Now, just something to note is that this particular set of brakes has come with the hose actually attached to the caliper and it's pre-filled and it has a rubber sealed cap over the end there. The lever is also pre-filled and it has a cap on the end there, uh, which means when I can trim this down, effectively, there should be minimal fluid loss because of the way the system is bought. However, it's not always the case. Sometimes they will come complete and you're gonna to have to break that seal, in which case you will at least need to do a lever bleed to make sure there's no air in the system. And other times they come with the caliper, the lever and the hose as separate entities and therefore you're definitely gonna to need to bleed the system. So just take that into account. If it's above your skill level, you might not want to do this. Okay, so there's two more factors you need to look into. One of them is the type of disc rotor that you're gonna fit onto your bike. Uh, there's two major types. There's a six bolt system, which as you'd imagine has six bolts to mount it to a six bolt hub. Uh, very much the standard you'll see across the board but there's also the center lock system now it's very common with shimano brakes for example and dt hubs so just check to make sure you've got the right rotor uh, 
to suit whatever you're having on your bike. One other thing that's really important to say is never hold the actual braking surface itself. Uh, any oils in residue in your skin can transfer to that and that can be enough to contaminate the pads. So always hold them by the center of the rotor and preferably if you can use some sort of gloves just to be sure. And the last thing is to make sure you have the relevant brake adapter if you need one. Now frames and forks have different compatibility with different size disc rotors and it's not uncommon for a fork for example to have a maximum size rotor and a minimum size rotor you can actually fit on there. Uh, quite often you will need a small adapter in order to fit one on. So for example to fit a 180mm rotor on here I do need this tiny little adapter. If I was running a 160 you could bolt one straight on. As soon as we have the wheel here we're going to go with installing the disc rotor first. Uh, pretty simple affair, this one as I say is a 6 bolt. Make sure you just nestle it in place and then using a Torx T25 loosely to start with just get all of the bolts in to make sure everything lines up you don't want to put any stress on the threads uh, particularly if you have like an expensive hub on there. If possible always use fresh bolts because they come with thread lock already on them and do take care that you've got the orientation of the disc the correct way. Now this disc actually has rotation written on it so you can see here it'll tell me which orientation it's supposed to be in uh, but it's actually quite obvious because of the design it's not always that obvious so just double check with yours. Now the next step it doesn't matter if you do the lever first or the caliper I'm going to do the lever because uh, my gear lever is hanging down and this particular one has got an i-spec mount on it so it's compatible with this brake lever so I'm just going to mount that onto the lever there so both of them then can go onto the bars. Now something to note with Shimano levers in particular is that the lever clamp on them has a little locking system on there. There's a little pin here that you can push and it unlocks the cradle there to fully open it so just take care and as you do that you have to remove the 4mm bolt and there's actually a tiny little o-ring just between them so just take care you don't lose that. Now let's get to work on getting the caliper in place. Now if you've got one of these pad spacers just get this in between the brake pads. Uh, saves hassle if you accidentally push the lever at some point in the process. And now I want to get the caliper mounted onto the post mounts on the fork. Now make sure that you have the relevant bolts that will have come with the adapter required for you and make sure the adapter is in the correct orientation. If you're unsure there's usually a marking on there that tells you which way is up. Uh, just take care with that. Get the caliper on, uh, nip it up. You don't want it tight because you want to be able to move the caliper in order to make sure the brake pads aren't rubbing on that disc rotor uh, at a later stage and then the final thing we'll do before you ride the bike is a bolt check to make sure everything's safe. So don't tighten it at this stage. So you want to get your hose routing absolutely nailed. Now for the optimum braking and the ease of maintenance you want your hoses to be as short as possible but you don't want them to hinder any movement on the bike. In particular if it's a rear brake line uh, you want to be able to turn your bars a certain amount without any strain on there. You don't want it to be pulling on the actual brake levers themselves. For example if you have a crash if the, the front wheel whips around it pulls the brake line out you're out of brakes. So make sure that everything is not going to foul anywhere. Now with the front brake you definitely want to make sure the brake hose runs on the inside of the fork not the outside. If you catch your fork on anything or you crash you could actually crimp the brake hose against the rock for example and split that. So you want to run it up the inside to where the hose guide goes on the actual fork arch there and then the neatest route possible through to your actual brake lever. Now before you actually trim anything down make sure you're leaving enough uh, for room for a longer travel fork or perhaps a higher rise bar or if you wanted to run your stem a bit higher uh, you want to leave it for the longest possible case that you could have on there. At the moment I've got a nearly 40 mil rise bar and I've got three spaces under my stem. I'm not going to go any higher so this is optimum so I can run it as short as I can to get a good curve without straining the hose and it will be super neat. An added benefit is it looks neater it makes less noise as well. The longer your hoses are the more chances of them just tapping on each other. Now there's one other thing that factors in here and it's called the banjo fitting and that's on the back of the actual caliper itself. Now if you undo the four millimeter bolt just the tiniest bit you don't want to let any fluid out of here we're talking just loosen it you can then move that banjo fitting and what that enables is you to get rid of that arc you can actually have it leaving the caliper at a much neater angle and actually technically it makes it a shorter routing as well so you want to get this as neat as possible the same goes for the back end of the bike make sure it's exiting the caliper and it's making its way to the frame in the shortest possible distance and as neat as possible as well 
Obviously with a full suspension bike, just like you're leaving room at the handlebar end, you want to leave enough room for any movement of the back end of the bike. So it's actually quite a good idea to cycle your bike through the travel before you commit uh, to basically shortening your hoses. Now we've got the hose exiting the caliper itself via that banjo at the optimum angle. I just want to make sure I've got the hose routing exactly where I want it before I determine the length of the hose for trimming it down. So I'm going to mount it to the fork arch here using the supplied mounting. Bear in mind it's a tiny little allen key here and it's very easy to round that thread out. So this is literally to hold it in place, you don't have to anchor the thing down. Now depending on the model fork you have, some will have an allen key fitting like this, others will have a zip tie fitting here. So if that's what you've got, get involved at this point. Get that in place and then you can make a real accurate cut point for the hose. Okay, so two things to take into account before you trim your hose down is making sure it's rooted the correct way at the bars here. I'm gonna go over the top of my shift hose, which you might think is a bit long, but I've got this set up to allow for a 480 degree bar turn. So in the event of a crash, if the bar spin around, it's not gonna damage anything. So I need to reflect that with this setup. So I'm gonna run this over the top of that. And then, yeah, all right, I could run it as short as that, which would be super neat and tidy. But if I turn the bars to 180 degrees, it's not gonna let them go. So I'm actually gonna let the bar go to 180 degrees and see how far, how long the hose needs to be to allow for that. And that is at this point. So that's how much hose I'll have there, which still looks nice and neat. So I'm gonna make, put a sticker there just to give me a little marking where I need to make my trim. Now at this point, if you don't have one of these dedicated hose cutters, you're going to need to remove the caliper from the bike uh, with your trusty mark in there and do this in a vice using the cable clamp. However, I've got this, so I'm going to do it whilst it's on the bike here. Now, something just to accentuate here, this will be slightly different depending on the manufacturer of brakes. On the end of here, there will be an insert on the end of this hose. I can't reuse that. So when I trim this, I'm going to need to reinstall a new insert there. Now, this bit is really important. Because of the fact you need to have the little rubber sheath that goes over the end, this needs to go on first before you put the insert in and before you have that eight mil nut and the olive there, because otherwise you can't get this on afterwards. If you think about the order, looking at this brake here, you can see you have the nut, then you have the olive that goes in and makes that seal, and then you have the bar that sits into the end of the hose. So just make sure you get the order of things correct at this stage. Now, because the brake lever is pre-filled with brake fluid, I want to give it the least chance of any coming out. So I'm actually just going to loosen the clamp off and just raise this up. So I'm going to have to undo this in order to use this nut on the hose. And I just don't want to risk any more oil coming out of here than absolutely necessary. As I said, you need to make this as 90 degrees as possible. By using a tool like this, it definitely helps. It's not to say that you can't do it without, it just makes it easier. So again, note the order, rubber sheath goes on first, then goes on the threaded nut and the, the olive that are complete together. Last piece of the puzzle is for the insert to go inside. Now, you won't be able to push these in by hand like this, so what you need to do is use the relevant tool. Okay, so now, literally a case of inserting this into the lever and carefully slide that into place. Now one thing to pay attention to when you're securing this eight millimeter nut, you can turn the hose. Now it won't make too much difference with your front brake routing, but it'll make a massive difference with the rear routing if it twists the hose. So just be sure that you don't let the hose twist as you're tightening this in. And this does need to be tightened all the way in because it compresses the olive, whole job of it. The brass olive is uh, to compress and not let anything past it. And the last stage is to just slide the rubber cover over the top. Okay, so we've trimmed down the hose successfully, but we still don't know if we're gonna need to bleed the lever yet. There could still be a tiny bit of air in there from when we trimmed the hose down. So what we're gonna do is remove the pad spacer from the caliper. We're gonna install the front wheel. We're gonna set the caliper up so it's not dragging, and then we're gonna see how the lever feels. If it's pulling too far towards the handlebars, it does suggest it does need a little top up of fluid at the lever end there. Uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. So let's get the wheel on first. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of do two things at the same time here. I wanna see if the caliper's dragging and also fill the lever, see if I'm gonna to need to bleed it. 
So it is dragging, so, and the lever is going a little bit towards the bar, so I probably will top up the fluid. In the meantime, if you hold the brake lever on, and then you can just nip up the bolts on the caliper, and you should find, most times, that that will be centered, or near enough centered. You might need to fine tune it from here. And I would definitely go back and check the bolts afterwards. Okay, so now I'm just gonna remove the front wheel once more and return the pad spacer in there, making sure those pads are spread apart as they should be. And then I'm gonna attach the bleeding cup to the lever there. And then hopefully you'll see just a few air bubbles pop out. And that's probably all it needs at this stage to get your brake feeling absolutely spot on. Okay, with the pad spacer in place, it's up to the lever to remove this little Allen bolt from the top, giving access to the master cylinder there. Now, when you install the cup into there, a couple of things to observe. It's only got a plastic thread on here, so make sure you line it up and don't over tighten it. It has got an O-ring there to form a seal. It's supposed to be a delicate process. And make sure the plunger is fully sent home because the next step you're gonna do is fill some oil into here. And then the whole point of this is you remove the plunger and then hopefully any air bubbles that have got to the top of the system here will just migrate through there, um, replaced by oil when you pump the lever. And you just tighten it till it stops. There, no more. Plunger is in place. So now I'm just gonna to top up in here with some fresh mineral fluid. Okay, so what we want to do here is just tap that brake line and see if anything immediately comes out. There you go, one little bubble. And then we're just going to give the lever a little pump and you'll probably see a couple of bubbles come out here. Not much more coming out. And the lever feels good. Feels just like the existing back brake on there. So that's it, that's all this brake needed. So now you replace that plunger. And then very carefully remove the cup off the lever. Now it's very easy to spill some of the fluid, but thankfully, Mineral fluid isn't too corrosive to your paint surfaces, but it could still get near other braking surfaces, so do take care when you do that. I'd recommend putting a rag or something around the bars to try and catch this. And then you want to get that bolt back in place as swiftly as possible. So have that ready. And then the cup can come off. And make sure that the bolt has still got the olive on there. That's your little seal, your little O-ring. Now you will get a tiny bit of overspill just as that nips up. Now ideally you want to use some isopropyl alcohol or some disc brake cleaner just to get rid of that residue around your brake there. Okay, so back down to the front wheel. I'm just going to remove that pad spacer once more. Just carefully remove that. Put the wheel back in place and we're going to check that feel of the brake again and then double check to make sure the caliper isn't rubbing and it's doing what we want it to essentially and repeat if necessary okay so it's not dragging that's a good thing I'm happy with that the brake feels exactly as it should do and I have still got further adjustments I can make at the lever blade there for lever travel and how far away it is from the bars last thing to do and most importantly is a full bolt check. Now obviously I shouldn't have to remind you, a brake is a safety item, so check and double check the caliper bolts, check your disc rotor bolts, check your hose clamps, and make sure the brake lever is in a position that suits your riding style, and it's tight enough that it's not gonna move around like this one does currently. Yeah, so get everything dialed in nicely, and then you can go and hit the trails. Uh, that's all it is. It's pretty simple fitting a brake as long as you follow basic principle. Uh, just to emphasize the point, it's pretty much the same across the board, no matter what the brand. And we've got a whole host of brake videos on our channel that can help you out, whether it's Shimano brakes or SRAM brakes or anything else. There should be some links underneath there to help you. And if there's anything that we haven't made as far as braking goes, let us know. We might be able to make the video and help you out. Thanks for watching. 
See you in the next video.